Hello everyone and welcome to our unit on opioids. Our first mini lecture is going to be just a general overview of the opioids. So first off, opioids are uh, narcotic analgesics, so they reduce pain without uh, producing unconsciousness. Especially at higher doses, they can produce euphoria and relaxation. And at very high doses, we can see uh, coma and death via respiratory depression, but we will talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, these are still in use because despite the risks and the negatives, they are the best painkillers known. They're extremely effective analgesics. So um, most opiates are derived from opium, which is the extract of the poppy plant, uh, the main ingredient of which is morphine. The main active ingredient, I should say, is morphine. Uh, most of this plant is grown in Southeast Asia, India, China, Turkey, or Southeastern Europe. I had seen a medicinal and recreational use for thousands of years before today. And up until the um, 20th century, we saw use in um, both medicinal and recreational drinks and uh, self preparations for home. Uh, laudanum was a, uh, a drink uh, made from uh, opium that was consumed recreationally or as part of medical tonics. Uh, but of course, those things are legal now as um, opiate use is much more tightly regulated. So there exist uh, synthetic and semi-synthetic opioids, which are similar in structure to naturally occurring opioids, but uh, are different in some important ways. So one that I'm sure you've heard of is heroin, which is created by the addition of two acetyl groups. This improves lipid solubility. If you remember back to our first unit on uh, pharmacokinetics, uh, enhanced lipid solubility means that it's able to cross barriers faster and reach sites of target uh, action, like our central nervous system, much more quickly. Because the brain is reached much more quickly, it's much more potent. So that rapid action is responsible for the dramatic euphoric effects of things like heroin. Uh, there also exist partial agonists. Uh, we've discussed this type of drug previously. These bind but produce a lesser effect than a full agonist would. So examples of uh, Talwid, uh, Nalbufine, and Buprenorphine. Uh, these are partial agonists. These have fewer side effects and have a lesser risk of dependence. Uh, and we'll come back to some of these later on. So let's talk a little bit about the effects of opiates on our central nervous system. Uh, the influence on our CNS is influenced dramatically by uh, the dose and the rate of absorption, right? How much you're taking and how quickly it's able to reach its target tissue are very important. At uh, low to moderate doses, we see pain relief, pupil constriction, drowsiness, an inability to concentrate, and uh, dreamy sleep. Uh, higher doses, so like more of abusive type doses, we might see abnormal um, state of elation, so that euphoria or sort of positive affect, a good feeling. Uh, this rush of, uh, is a powerful reinforcer and it's something that prompts repeated use. Uh, aversive effects are also present, so things like dysphoria, uh, restlessness, anxiety, and nausea and vomiting can also take place. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, the regions that underlie this uh, as we move on. Uh, nausea is actually an interesting property as it arises directly from stimulation of the area postrema, which is something we've mentioned previously. It's an area of the brain that's important for detecting the presence of toxins in blood. So these, these drugs can actually cause stimulation of the area postrema and cause nausea and vomiting. At very high doses, we see um, sedation that could lead to unconsciousness, hypothermia, low blood pressure, and very, very constricted pupils, or what we might call pinpoint pupils. Um, these are some hallmarks of an overdose. Um, action on the brainstem can actually cause respiratory depression and subsequent death. So there are also effects uh, a little bit peripherally in terms of action on the GI tract. Uh, constipation is an unfortunate common side effect, though this side effect has proved useful as a therapeutic for um, diseases that cause diarrhea, things like bacterial or parasitic infections. So a modified opioid called uh, loperamide actually achieves the same effect, but it doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier at low doses. So it can produce this constipation type effect without producing any central effects, which is ideal. So antagonists also exist. A pure antagonist uh, will uh, bind to the same sites. It's structurally similar, so it will bind to the opioid receptors, but will produce no effect. It has no efficacy. So this is a, a type of competitive antagonist that we've talked about previously. So things like um, naloxone are competitive antagonists. They bind and exert no effect. Because these can outcompete endogenous opioids and um, 
uh, drugs, opiate drugs that have been taken, these can um, rapidly prevent or reverse opiate effects, uh, which is why things like naloxone are sort of standard first-line treatment for overdose. This will rapidly displace uh, the drug in the system and um, can rescue patients who have overdosed. So here's a little figure from the book sort of uh, detailing the different sorts of opiates we've talked about. We have natural um, narcotics that are derived directly from opium, so things like morphine and codeine. Semi-synthetic narcotics, which are just modified versions of those natural narco narcotics with um, various uh, alterations. Things like uh, heroin and oxycodone can be produced th through this. There are also totally synthetic narcotics, which are, um, as they sound like, not derived, but uh, completely synthetic. Um, things like uh, methadone and fentanyl are, are important members of this class that we'll come back to later on. There's also the endogenous neuropeptides. So, I mean, it, it might not surprise you to know that because our brains have opiate receptors, our bodies do in fact produce their own um, opiate neurotransmitters, our neuropeptides. So we'll talk a bit about those as well. So just a brief word uh, in the introduction here about the ongoing opiate crisis. Uh, and we'll talk about this in more detail um, later on in this chapter, but this is a national health care crisis with uh, deaths related to opiate overdose nearly quadrupling since uh, 1999. With, uh, uh, in, in 2018, we had over 67,000 deaths in that year alone. And as I mentioned, we have naloxone as a first line of response and with sort of a, a way to reverse opiate uh, overdoses if we can get there in time. Though this has been somewhat controversial, there are those that believe that first responders shouldn't carry this and shouldn't be rescuing addicts, and that furthermore, uh, tax dollars shouldn't go to this kind of thing. Uh, from my personal point of view, I don't agree with that, uh, and this is something we can get into a bit later on in the unit. Uh, as far as treating people who are um, addicted, we don't have uh, a great path to recovery. Uh, most, foc most efforts are focused on harm reduction and maintenance. Uh, which again we'll talk to about more later on, but basically trying to keep people off of more dangerous drugs and reducing the amount of harm that is done by the crisis. Okay, that's it for the overview. I'll see you next time.